Hey, DCF, Pastor Brad here. Hope you had a fantastic weekend and hope you're having another great start to your week on a Monday or Tuesday or whenever you're getting to watch this video. I pray that these videos encourage you each week to be pursuing the Lord, to be prioritizing Christ as uh, the, the treasure of our heart that we would seek after more than anything else. And as your pastor, I confess to you that at times I fall uh, woefully short of that. Um, at times, sleep and, uh, and rest appear more delightful to me than spending time with Christ. Uh, there were several times this past week where I just turned that alarm off when I could have woken up and spent time with him and his word and, uh, and, and gotten my day started off that way. Instead, slept to the last possible second, which was still early, still 6.30 to get the kids off to school. But um, that 5.30 hour comes quick and um, at times my flesh falls short and I, and I see things that are woefully less delightful than Christ appear as if they're more delightful than Christ. And so just realize that as I'm encouraging you to pursue Christ in your life, I'm, I'm encouraging myself. I'm preaching to the crowd of which I'm a part of that, that we need to continually be reminded and, and have that, that fire stoked and, and, and flamed, uh, uh, so that we aren't, um, giving in to the deceit of this world that tells us that all these other options are equally or even more so delightful to our souls than Jesus is. And so may we be a people who fight against those temptations and who in the, in the moments of decision, choose Christ and pursue Christ uh, morning by morning, day after day. I'm coming to you today with Lord's Day 43 of the Heidelberg Catechism. Uh, we're in the last 10 days of, of the Catechism. And we're making our way through the Ten Commandments. We're almost to the end of those. We are on commandment number nine today, which let me just read that for you from Exodus chapter 20. Um, and it says this, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. That's the ninth commandment that God revealed to Moses, which Moses revealed to the Israelites as they stood at Mount Sinai and received God's God's tablets, God's law. Here's what the Catechism says and expounds upon uh, in regards to that commandment. What is God's will for you in the ninth commandment? God's will is that I never give false testimony against anyone. Twist no one's words. Not gossip or slander. Nor join in condemning anyone without a hearing or without a just cause. Rather, in court and everywhere else, I should avoid lying and deceit of every kind. These are the devices the devil himself uses, and they would call down on me God's intense anger. I should love the truth, speak it candidly, and openly acknowledge it. And I should do what I can to guard and advance my neighbor's good name. This is a command that <clears throat> likely hits home for each and every one of us. We might not consider ourselves to be uh, the most deceitful people in the world. We probably don't walk around speaking lies at every opportunity. But how easy it is to use our words to twist, to distort, um, to manipulate, to bring down build ourselves up, <clears throat> all of which stand opposed to God's will and God's desire in the ninth commandment. Uh, the, the specific command is thinking about a courtroom, false witness against your neighbor, um, or at least a, a, a jury of your peers, uh, whatever the, the circumstances would have been in, in, uh, in, in the setting of Exodus, um, to, to not speak with dishonest testimony about what somebody else has or has not done. But obviously the catechism, like uh, it does in every command, applies the principle much more broadly than that specific situation. Um, and it's not hard for us to think of all of the ways in which we could easily break this commandment. Uh, twisting someone's words, 
and using them against them. Um, understanding what somebody said, but because of the way they said it, maybe this is a good application for kids to parents. Uh, we can kind of say, well, that's not exactly what you said, and we do something maybe less than what we knew they meant, but we twist their words uh, to, to garner a different meaning. Or an employee to a boss, any, any sort of um, any sort of role where, where there's an authority and there's leadership over us. How about gossip? I mean, man, that is just so easy of a trap to fall into. I used to, I used to, to swim in the pools of gossip when I was a young kid in middle school and high school. Just love to be a part of the know, know what was going on. I, I used to have friends that would call me and share with me the latest gossip, the latest scoop, and I just, my soul loved it. And I've grown to just hate it. Ugh, it just feels so gross to me. And and you know, if 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 someone starts down that road of sharing other people's business with me, I just I just walk away. I don't want any part of it. Um, in the church, we are we are prone to that as much as the rest of the world is. And, and you know, I've seen it. I've witnessed it. And we we all recognize the the ease of falling into gossip or slander. You know, gossip is probably sharing people, sharing truth or unsubstantiated claims about people, whereas slander is speaking misinformation about people, bringing down somebody's name. I mean, how much do we see that in the political realm these days, right? It's just, it's just headline after headline after headline that try to crush your enemy, your opponent, whatever side you of the aisle you sit on uh, to, to bring down the opponent with unsubstantiated claims. And then things come out months later that the news stories were false and, oh well, who cares? Damage is already done. I mean, it's just, it makes you want to not listen to the media and not follow the stories because they just are so, uh, in many ways, un untrustworthy. Um, but what I really want to draw our attention to, we can, we can easily think about all the ways in which this commandment is broken in our lives and the ways we need to repent of our sin. But the, <laughs> excuse me, the root of it all is seen in John chapter 8. Let me turn there real quick. Um, John 8, Jesus is having a conversation with, uh, the Pharisees and, um, and he's, it's a it's a remarkable conversation, but he tells them that they are of they are sons of the devil. They're not sons of God. They think they're sons of Moses. And he's like, You're not sons of Moses, you're not sons of God, you're sons of the devil. But then he talks about who the devil is. Let me just read you a part of this. Verse 39. Then they answered, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works of your you are doing the works your father did. Let me skip ahead. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. Right? Using false truths, half truths in the garden to deceive Eve. You could be like God. We already are like God. Um, and does not stand in the truth because he, there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own good character or out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Because I, But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. So Jesus makes a stark contrast between God and Satan. One is completely of truth. The other is completely of lies. He says there is no truth in him. None. And so when we lie, when we break the ninth commandment, um, whether it's a out whether, in whatever form, gossip, slander, false testimony, believing false testimony without giving people their proper due in court, um, innocent until proven guilty, we are acting as if we are sons of the devil. We are acting as if our hearts are in line with him, the father of lies, right? That is such a strong statement. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a, a liar and the father 
of lies. What a what a what a horrendous thing to have spoken of you. And that is what is true of Satan and those who are from the seed of the serpent. And so this is the commandment. Again, all of God's commandments are rooted in the character of God. Lest we think that there's anything wrong with the law, right? We don't earn salvation by obedience to the law, but the law is a reflection of God's good character. We are called to be people of truth, who love truth, who pursue truth, who give truth the time to come out and prove itself in the proper forms within a courtroom, innocent until proven guilty, not guilty by means of a public, uh, uh, you know, sway of the public through through media uh, reports and stories. When we when we operate out of those things, we prove to be of the of the serpent in line with the devil. We have to be people who love truth, for God is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, Jesus says in John 14. So this commandment, you know, there's so many ways to think about how it applies to our life, but it matters deeply because we want to be of the seed of the woman, of the seed of Abraham, of the seed of Jesus Christ, not of the seed of the serpent. We want to speak lies. <laughs> we want to speak truth, not lies. Bad slip right there. But I'm at the end of the video, so I'm not going to do it again. Have a great day, loving and serving your king, and I'll see you on Sunday.